Hi everyone, my name is Ramin Zahed. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Animation Magazine, and I'm very proud and pleased to introduce to you our 2022 Rising Stars of Animation. Um, as you know, this is a feature that we do every year uh, in which we spotlight about 16 talented and diverse men and women who have uh, been giving us some amazing projects over the past year, or they have uh, some cool new movies and TV shows coming up and uh, we get to know them a little better and uh, tell us more about their career and offer advice about how to uh, get ahead in animation and uh, so this year is no different uh, we have a wonderful talented group um, and their projects range from shows that we've seen already like Arcane and The Cuphead Show to upcoming series and movies like The Bad Guys and The Sea Beast and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. So we can't wait for you to meet these men and women. And you can actually read more about them in uh, this month's uh, issue of Animation Magazine with uh, Pixar's Turning Red on the cover. And uh, we hope you can pick it up. Um, go to our website and get your own copy of the magazine to learn more about these wonderful people. So without further ado, enjoy our, our spotlight and our amazing rising stars of animation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matthew Bordnave, director of Nubian vs. Nubian on Amazon Prime, director of other shows to be determined. Now, how I got this job was interesting. I was contacted by Benjamin Kaltenecker and, and Giancarlo Volpe, and they said, hey, would you like to direct on a short called Diabolical? And I said, wait one second. Let me ask my friends if they are down. And guess what? I said, yo, man, uh, John Carlo hit me up and was like, you want to go direct this short? And I was like, ah, let me see who's down. So I'm hitting you up. Would you be interested in doing designs? Would you be interested in doing boards? Would you be interested in doing? And they all said yes. Now, what do I love about my job? Collaborating with my friends, collaborating with different artists, making cool stuff, putting together that everyone can enjoy. And you can check it all out on different streaming sites. It's insane, because back in the day, you only had like three networks to watch all this stuff. Now, what are the biggest challenges of the job? It's always schedules and deadlines. It's always a battle against those two. And how I cope with the stressors of that? That's why I bought this arcade cabinet. Ready? Now, the best advice I ever gotten in the animation industry was from a great artist named Alan Iverson. He said, be yourself. Everybody's already taken. You know what I took that as? I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna bring my voice into this industry. I'm gonna do things the way I wanna do it. And let's see who's gonna be entertained by it. Hello, my name is Rona Liu and I am the production designer on Disney Pixar's Turning Red. So I got this job um, with through interviewing. So Pixar has this thing called, um, it's like uh, Pixar 3.0 and for every leadership role, um, you put a portfolio in and you interview. And so I interviewed with Domi Shi, the director, and Lindsay Collin, the, um, the producer. And, um, you know, I came in with my portfolio. I came in with like prepared with like what I could bring to the show, um, what I envision the show to be, what I envision the leadership to be, how I work with everybody. So all the typical interview questions that I guess you would get um, at any job interview. And um, the only thing I feel about it is just super grateful because um, I know Pixar has like so many experienced like well-seasoned production designers and i know they interviewed for it too and me being like a total newbie um i just just felt so grateful that domi and Lindsay put their trust in me and thought that you know i could carry this show so that's how i got the job and yeah super lucky um for me i feel like i wake up for most days i wake up just feeling really excited to be working with all of my really good friends. I would say on this show, there was kind of this special vibe where a lot of people were just, you know, they came in with a lot of 
experience of working together from previous shows or they were just friends from like other companies. Um, and it just made such an enjoyable environment. And I would say like the problem solving, you know, for example, we had this like one time where late in the show where one of our main characters had to go through a new design um, change because the story was changing and it was like we had half a day to make a decision on what it was because things had to move and all of us like five departments just all banded together within a three hour time period and we just brainstormed what can we do this how can we reuse what are some deadlines okay what's your like limitation was my limitation we just came together and figured it out and I feel like those are kind of the moments that I personally remember the most because it's literally like a bunch of like really close friends just coming together to make something work and super special so the best advice that I actually got was from um, a friend and someone I really look up to who's also at Pixar now Jeff Turley so when I was interning at Consumer Products, I was showing everybody my portfolio, being super like crazed about like, oh, am I putting enough figure drawings? Am I putting enough environments versus characters? And he just sat me down and he was like, hey, Rona, what are you really excited about? Like, you know, if you put in the things that you are really excited about, that excitement's going to show through and whoever's looking at it will be excited as well. And I really took that to heart because it kind of just wiped away all the noise of like what you need for this for this person for this company and it kind of just gave me the confidence to show who I am as an artist in my portfolio and I feel like and the advice that I would give is just that because you know whether you're rejected or you're accepted if you're showing who you are then that's all that really matters because you can't ever you can't control who's looking at your portfolio you can only sh sh control how you show up and thank you all so much for watching and i hope you have a brilliant career hi i'm patrick keith and i'm a production designer at sony pictures animation on spider-man across the spider-verse part one so that means overseeing and creating the look of the entire film, working with directors and an incredible viz dev team, animation, modeling, lighting, texture team at Imageworks to create the follow-up to Into the Spider-Verse. We got something really exciting planned. I was a art director on Into the Spider-Verse and just felt when the film was wrapping up, I wasn't done with this universe. There's so many exciting worlds to explore and characters to create. And so when given the opportunity to come on as production designer for the sequel, I was eager to jump on and become a bigger part of the filmmaking team and push this narrative in these this story further. A lot of people talk about the anxiety and stress towards creating a sequel to something that was such a success, but I look at it as a, as, as a license to do absolutely anything we ever wanted. We've got free reign here to push the medium as far as we possibly can. And that's the exciting opportunity and challenge here is there's so much to explore. There's so much we want to do. And now getting the best team together to create something that's never been seen before is, again, it's a challenge, but it's an exciting opportunity. I started working as an illustrator and graffiti artist when I was like 16 and did that through college where I started working as a storyboard artist. And then I went and worked in video games actually for several years while doing animation design for advertising on the side. By the time I was 30 and getting my green card and had moved to America, I decided to leave the video games industry. And that's when finally Sony Pictures and I decided that it was a good time to collaborate and work together. And I jumped over just several years ago to work with Sony Pictures and feature animation. Uh, the animation field is just ripe for an evolution right now. It's a medium that has, you have absolute total control and you can create anything you ever want. And the idea of telling a story and changing the way in which we even see the world through the animation style, to me, just seems like the most exciting medium to tell the most authentic stories. What I look for in artists and what I what I have always sort of stood by is pay attention to the things you pay attention to. What is it that makes you unique and brings your unique perspective and voice to the animation industry? Make sure your fundamentals are solid and you're, you know, great artist and drawer, but then it's about what makes you different, what makes you an interesting person. What is it about your point of view in the world that will help push our stories and our films and our medium to a new level and explore new and exciting places? I can't wait to see everybody. Uh, taking our movie in this new experience and come deeper into the Spider-Verse. Hi, my name is Liz Ravino. 
I'm the executive producer and showrunner of Rise Up Sing Out and a director on The Proud Family Louder and Prouder. I got into animation first as, as a production assistant and sort of meandered my way up the, the art path from revisionist to storyboard artist, but I'd never really considered that I could be a director until um, a producer actually on, on Final Space at Shadow Machine. Um, after our first season, she pulled me into her office and was literally like, you did such an amazing job as a board artist and we saw how hard you were working and would you be interested in being an assistant director? And I was like, I know this is a job, but yes, absolutely. Um, but it makes me think why I didn't think that being a director was a job that it, I could do. And I think a lot of it was, I just didn't see anyone that looked like me doing that job. Um, and I was a little bit afraid to ask for things in the beginning. So um, yeah, I, I got my first directing job because a producer asked me if I wanted to be a director um, and I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> I think my favorite part about being a director is the problem solving. <laughs> and I feel like a masochist saying this, but I really like how every day I wake up and I have like a loose sense of what my day is going to look like, but I don't really know what's going to happen. And so it might be something where it's like, oh, the overseas studio has questions or, oh, the board artist needs help with a scene. And it's like constant problem solving and puzzle solving. And I, I, I like the challenge of trying to like get this rocket into space. Um, it, it fills me with a deep satisfaction. <laughs> What is the biggest challenge of being a director? Ooh, <laughs> that's a hard one. I think it probably is um, miscommunications can happen sometimes, but also you're constantly kind of under, under the pressure of a deadline that is ever looming. Like you're always late, no matter what you're doing, you're late. And so it, it feels like you're, you're trying to make the best possible thing in the least possible time. And it's, it's both a, a cool cons constraint, because I think you can make very interesting things that way, but it definitely <laughs> is a challenge. <laughs> there was a piece of advice I got very early on in my career when I was actually just transitioning from being a PA to being a revisionist. And I didn't feel how important it was at the time, but it has been one of the most important things, which is it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think in the beginning, I was just like, gotta go fast, I gotta, gotta get to the next tier, gotta go. But like, your timeline doesn't have to look like anybody else's timeline. Do things at the rate that feels correct to you. Do the jobs that make you happy and don't, as much as you can help it, don't compare yourself to other people and their paths. Because at the end of the day, your journey in animation is so uniquely your own. Like I haven't talked to any two people in animation who've had the same path and I doubt I ever will. And that's kind of amazing. So yeah, just, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Hey everyone, my name is Dale Malinowski and I'm the co-executive producer of Transformers Earthspark. I got this job by participating in a writing summit that Nickelodeon and Hasbro E1 were hosting back in 2019. Uh, there was a room full of super talented writers and we were all pitching our vision for what the next Transformers show could be. And I, it airing on Nickelodeon, ultimately I sprinkled uh, the Nickelodeon ingredients over my take, which I believe are heart, humor, uh, wish fulfillment and the kid point of view. And uh, then I was invited to write a three page synopsis outlining what my vision would be. And shortly after that, I, I got a call from both studios development teams saying they were interested in developing the show with me. And it was a tremendous thrill that changed my life. What I love most about my job is telling stories with characters that I've loved my, my whole life. Uh, and having the opportunity to share these characters with a whole generation of kids who might be meeting Optimus Prime and Bumblebee and the rest of the Autobots for the very first time. Uh, it's, it's very special. And so uh, being having the privilege and opportunity to contribute to those characters' legacy is a dream come true. And uh, some of the big challenges of my job are learning how to produce for the first time uh, and not being shy about asking questions when I have them and leaning on my teammates and crew members and my partners uh, uh, for advice or help uh, and them graciously offering it, you know, for whatever I need. Um, 
has helped me through. And then also imposter syndrome hit me pretty hard when I first started and I didn't know anything about it, but uh, I talked to one of my partners and she had seen it before and kind of saw it in me and, and provided me with um, some resources uh, to learn more about it. And so we talked and then I read. And so anyway, that experience helped me uh, understand what was happening and learn how to process and work through those feelings. Uh, and what kind of advice do I give when people ask about working in animation? It's usually the same thing I say, and I'm sure you've heard this before. It's just don't stop trying until it happens. I, you know, we all hear a lot of no's before we ever hear a yes. That's certainly true to me. I think it's true for a lot of folks and it can be frustrating to make you doubt yourself, but um, take time to reflect on all those experiences, you know, interviews, email exchanges, whatever it may be, there's value in each of them. And if you can find and mine that value, you can apply it to your next effort um, and grow from that. And I promise you, you'll, you will get to the place you want to be um, as long as you keep going. In my opinion, the only way to fail is by quitting. So keep going. Uh, the best career advice I ever got about working in animation uh, was very simple, but uh, someone still had to tell it to me. It was that you, the individual, are significantly more important and valuable than your work, and you must take time to take care of yourself. You, your relationships in your personal life, um, your health, and your work will all benefit from caring for yourself. So please take time to do so. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa Estevez. I am an executive producer, co-showrunner, and co-creator of a new series called Super Wish. I sort of found animation along my career path. It was a bit of a surprise to me. I mean, growing up, I was a huge fan of animation. Like most kids in the 80s, I would spend every Saturday morning in front of the TV, but I never realized it was a career path for me uh, at the time because I was not a visual artist. Uh, I did love telling stories though, so I ended up going to film school where I studied writing and directing uh, with a focus on children's media. And after graduating, um, there was a posting at an animation studio, so I sort of boldly uh, applied. Um, I started as a design coordinator and uh, really focused on learning what everybody on the crew did, what their jobs were. From there, I was a production coordinator, and then um, I landed my first job producing on a series called Spliced. Um, I didn't know how to produce at the time, but I did know how to ask a lot of questions and how to read a schedule. And I had a fantastic crew that I was working with who were great at answering questions. Um, and I loved, loved, loved the content. And because of that, I spent every waking hour figuring out all the pieces that I didn't know. Then I started to create content with my creative partner. We started pitching. Um, I realized that I really loved helping to tell a story in the medium of animation and I wanted to be involved in every part of the process. We created a few properties and had a couple of them optioned and finally uh, had our series greenlit a couple of years ago and we've been on the production path ever since. The biggest challenges of my career have definitely been the ones we've faced these past two years during the pandemic. Um, we had pitched our series just before the lockdown happened and received our green light during the lockdown. And since then, every stage of production has happened um, remotely. Uh, and there was a certain level of growing pains, uh, figuring out how to keep the creative synergy high when everybody was in a different location um, and also a level of disappointment that we had to get over every time another stage of production would come and go um, and we still weren't together in person as a group but at the end of the day it really just taught us to think outside the box and to develop new pipelines so that we could ensure the same creative connection and synergy that we had um, previously before the pandemic. If I could give anyone advice on um, your career or your role, I would say to do something that you love, which I know is a very popular piece of advice to give, but it's so true. Uh, if you're lucky enough to do something you love, you're going to try harder. You're going to push yourself farther. You're going to lean in just a little bit more than you otherwise might. The other piece of advice uh, I like to give is to never stop answering the question, 
what do I want to be when I grow up? This is not just a question for little kids. Um, I think it's important that we allow ourselves to continue to dream big and evolve because you never know where it's going to take you. My name is Ernie Renard and I am the art director on Luck. I do feature film that's coming out under the studio Skydance animation. I'm also an art director in the development department. When I was in school, I was going to be a car designer. Basically segued from that into visual effects just because there was a lot of um, opportunity in that area. At some point, I wanted to get back into design because visual effects, I wasn't quite cut out for it. I mean, it was, it was interesting, but um, it didn't, I didn't feel like it gave me an, enough of an opportunity to express myself creatively. If you think about it, luck is really sort of an abstract concept, right? Uh, it, and so we had to take that idea and figure out how to create a world that represents that idea. And we came up with an uh, basically a, a, a land of luck, right? And there's two lands. There's a land of good luck and a land of bad luck. The, the, the land of bad luck is a mirror reflection of good luck. Um, but bad luck is dark and good luck is light and sunny all the time. You get the concept very quickly. And um, there's some just in some really clever ways. The mechanics of the world are just really, really fun. And it's, it's a really, you know, it's a really beautiful place. I really enjoyed working with all of the wonderful artists. Um, on luck. And one thing that we did on this production that I haven't had an opportunity to do too much in the past as in, in sort of a, in sort of like an art director or visual development role is, is work very closely with the story department. We, uh, we had uh, regular meetings with the story people and we were able to kind of, you know, throw ideas at their way and then they would kind of throw things back at us. It kept both departments from straying too far apart, which was really nice. But at the same time, you know, we had a little bit of room to kind of like come up with with concepts and sort of bounce things off of each other. So it worked out really well. It was a wonderful experience. If I were to give somebody advice on a career in animation, I would say find something that inspires and interests you within the within the animation world, uh, maybe a certain discipline. And once you have come close to sort of identifying what that is, focus in and zero in on that. If you want to be a character designer, all of the other artists that want to be character designers, all of the, your competition, essentially, that's all that they're doing. They're only doing character design. And so in order to kind of break into that, you're going to want to take the totality of all of your efforts and focus those in that singular direction. Thanks for watching and good luck with your career. My name is Rolene Lee. I'm currently a director on Star Trek Prodigy at Nickelodeon. I got this job right after finishing up on this really awesome and fun DreamWorks show, Abominable, through word of mouth. And my supervising director and EP on Abominable really gave me some really kind recommendations. I love shows like Abominable and Star Trek Prodigy because of its high octane action adventure and comedy elements and drama. Uh, my job is all about collaborating with all the disciplines of the production, like boards and editorial, etc., to bring our creators and showrunners' visions alive. At the same time, retain the best of everyone's creative voices. Some of the biggest challenges is to balance our show's scope and everyone's ambition and wrangle them into a cohesive package within time and budget limitation, especially ensure our artists have reasonable work-life balance. Because the show is gorgeous and the story is rich and complex, there are a lot of cool settings and action sequences. We want to make sure our writers and showrunners and artists are all on the same page of how much they should push or how much they should refrain from overdoing so the episodes doesn't balloon into a movie and everyone still have a life after work. Some of the best advice I got from friends and mentors over the years, there are a couple of them. One is short and sweet. We're just making cartoons for God's sake. The unsaid part of that is probably something like chill out, have fun, 
remind yourself what got you into the business in the first place and readjust your expectations for the job and for yourself so you can maintain that sense of awe and wonder and be sustainable in this lifelong career. The other advice is always be interested in every stage of the production. Look ahead in the pipeline and try to understand where your part of the job uh, goes to and how it fit into the whole production. That way, we become more conscientious and cooperative with other departments um, and make everyone's job more efficient. And we don't need to take anything personally. It's just for the greater good of the final product. Hi, my name is Wip Vernoy. I recently directed a 3D feature uh, called Two Little Toddlers. Uh, it's about to be released in the Netherlands and Belgium. I was given this role because uh, I have previous experience with uh, uh, TV shows, uh, 2D and 3D, um, mostly preschool. Also, uh, it's my second feature film. Um, uh, before I uh, worked and lived in the UK, now I'm back in the Netherlands. I started as a character animator. I did a lot of flash animation for commercials, for games. Um, I came from a traditional background uh, with technical know-how and um, yeah, my curiosity just kept me going f uh, into all these directions. Every project is its own journey, uh, including this one. And um, I have to say, uh, being in the role that I have, uh, it's it's the best place to be because you get involved with all the creative disciplines. So you you get to meet and work with so many different people uh, who bring uh, their own specific expertise and enthusiasm to to make the production the best it can be. Big challenges in the in the production are yeah I guess it's always uh, it's always finding the balance between what we can humanly achieve. And, uh, and figuring out what is the best story to tell, to find the style that matches the, the, what you have, have in, uh, in mind, um, but also discovering together um, what this could be. What would be advice I want to give uh, people starting out is, you know, keep learning. Uh, there's so much knowledge out there that's being shared. It's, it's also part of the collaborative spirit of animation. You know, everybody is so happy to share what they know um, because they they have a passion. Um, I think the main thing if, is if if you if you follow your your passion, the thing that you you love, your enthusiasm will, you know, be contagious, and you'll find teams that. Um, Let's share that enthusiasm with you. Thank you very much to Animation Magazine for uh, um, asking me to be part of this. I, I've, it, it's a lot of fun, uh, especially being uh, mentioned in a list with uh, truly incredible people. So thank you. Hi, my name is Florian Marschitz. I'm the art director on the movie the bad guys soon to be released. I got this job. I got this job after working for the last 10 years as a face dev artist at DreamWorks. I've worked on numerous movies, I know the teams, and um, for years I didn't want to be a director. I thought I wasn't ready, and I've, I've also I also wanted to focus a little bit more on my personal life. And, uh, but this opportunity came up and even if I thought I wasn't ready and I wasn't up to the task, I, I took it nonetheless, thinking that would be a, a nice new challenges for me. And uh, I'm glad I did. What I love about my job is that you grasp the integrity of the movie making process. It's it look like uh, it looked like a mountain to climb for sure at first. It's completely overwhelming, but uh, working with step by step with all those amazing team, 
it's uh, it's very humbling to see them coming with some very ingenious solution they are bringing their a game they're so uh, they're so motivated and they with all those team you you you're building a movie that is even better that it that you thought it would be so it overall it was a it's it's a very humbling experience very far from just being an artist at your desk drawing and ending that to, <laughs> and, and seeing the final result on the screen it's uh, being being part of this entire motion it's it was uh, it's it's fascinating the big challenge though is that you train for years to be the best possible artist and suddenly you barely have time to draw it's you you have to give the you have to think of the well-being of the movie and give the piece you would normally do to someone you trust in your team uh, so you are so you will have time to focus on the biggest picture and lead teams in the right direction and it's it's a totally different job and I haven't trained for that at all. <laughs> Suddenly you have to rely on your social skills. It it could be overwhelming. You you also have to be very flexible because there's little emergency on a daily basis and there's always assignment being reshuffled and it's it's part of the it's part of the this beautiful chaos that is movie making and i must say this this one wasn't bad at all bad guys was a pretty smooth ride so yeah imagine what it could be <laughs> the best advice i've ever got uh, working in animation especially for this role a director is that it's fine not to have the answer right away it's you're in meeting all day and people are expecting you to have the right answer to their question and sometimes you don't and it's fine to to take the time go back to your desk draw find a, find find the solution in the in the more quiet uh, environment and then go back to go back to them and and let them know if you found something or not but it's 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 uh, sometimes it's difficult too because there's always this pressure and yeah it's it's just that it's it's fine to take a step back and allow yourself some time to think and that's it for me thanks for listening Hi, my name is Ingrid Coleno, and I'm the modeling supervisor on Sonic Prime at Wildbrain Studios. I started out as a modeling PA at Wildbrain about eight years ago, and it's when I became a senior artist that I started mentoring other artists, and I really enjoyed being able to share what I had learned from previous productions. This is what got me thinking about what a leadership role would look like. And now as a modeling supervisor, I'm really glad that I went for it because I've gotten so much support from my team and from the Sonic crew and that it's really been fun. What I love about my job as a supervisor is that I really get to advocate for my team, um, watching them grow and improve, and helping them succeed has been really rewarding for me. My advice for people who want to get into animation is to be patient and to keep learning. It's super easy to get discouraged when you first start out. And I think you should just focus on developing your skills and just keep challenging yourself. 
um, also get inspired by artists that you love. You know, create projects that excite you. And I promise you'll learn a lot and your hard work will pay off. Hi, my name is Moon Young Jung. I'm the art director on the Sea Beast. I'm originally from South Korea. I came to the United States to study concept design. I chose to go to Art Center College of Design to study, and I started my career at DreamWorks Animation in 2010. I met Jed Schlanger, the producer on the show at DreamWorks Animation. He introduced the Sea Beast project and the team. I instantly fell in love with the project, so I asked if I could be the art director. What I love most about my job is creating a world for the story. It requires a lot of work, but it's really amazing when everything comes along. The biggest challenge for me as an art director is having a strong taste and vision for the project. A story requires a certain look and feel, but it's not always very obvious. I believe having a taste and vision is the key to this puzzle. A piece of advice I would like to give to the people who want to work in animation is trying to find your own voice. It's really hard to hard to have one, have a voice. Maybe I'm still finding my own as well, but it makes your work stand out. The best advice I ever got about working in animation is appreciating people's hard work. Like I mentioned before, the movie making process is truly magical, but it could be very stressful at the same time. So it's very easy to overlook people's hard work. I also find, find myself motivated when people gave me a genuine compliment. So I would do the same. Thank you. Hi, my name is Marty Broski. I am a lead animator on uh, the Cuphead show in Lighthouse Studios. Uh, I got into animation in year 2011 when I started a studying animation course in IDT Dunleary in Dublin. I graduated that course in 2015 and since then I've been working in the industry. So I started working in Lighthouse Studios in 2018 and have been with them since then. Um, I have been uh, a lead on an animation show before, prior to Cuphead. And uh, when we heard the news in the studio that we were getting Cuphead show, we all got really excited because uh, it was such a phenomenal uh, show to be working on. And uh, since then, uh, I've applied to be a lead on that show and I got the role. So the Cuphead show is an incredibly um challenging show when it comes to the animation style and it brings a lot of challenges but it also requires a lot of skill and um, working on this show is just an incredible experience because the crew that works on it is just a bunch of such talented people um the advice i got as an animator was to not get emotional over feedback. And I thought that was a very candid, important advice that I could definitely forward to future animators. Feedback is not an attack on your skills, your personality. A lot of the time I might feel like that because we're all very sensitive people. However, we need to take it with a grain of salt and learn from it because um, it takes time. Um, and you have to be very humble in your learning process. Um, it takes time and experience to get where you want, but it will be worth it. I hope you enjoy watching the Cuphead show on Netflix. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi everyone, my name is Carissa Valencia and I'm so honored to be a part of this. I am the creator and showrunner of Spirit Rangers. Spirit Rangers is an upcoming uh, preschool series at Netflix Animation. It follows a modern Native American family who live in a magical national park. Half my family is indigenous. We're Somala Shumash from the Santa Barbara area. So it's inspired by the stories that I grew up hearing as a kid on the reservation. I got this job when I pitched Spirit Rangers to my boss and mentor, Chris Mee, about three years ago now. Um, but I met Chris when I was her script coordinator on Vampirina and Doc McStuffins. So when she moved over to Netflix, she asked me if I had anything to pitch and I had Spirit Rangers on my computer. It was a two page document. I sent it to her and I'm so grateful that she loved it and supported it. And I've been at Laughing Wild and Netflix ever since. Um, what I love most about my job is that I am surrounded by the most amazing, talented native artists in the business. I'm so grateful that they're on the team. Oftentimes in my uh, career or in college or um, just in life in general, I'm often the only native person in the room. So being surrounded by people who have shared experiences, but also so different from me too, it's just been the best time. The biggest challenges that we faced, um, I feel like the biggest challenge of my job, there's a couple of things. One is obviously the pandemic was really hard for everybody. A silver, silver lining is that the pandemic has opened up opportunities um, all over the country. So you didn't have to be in LA to work on Spirit Rangers specifically, which was great. So we have talent all over and I'm just like, I'm very happy about that, despite how awful the pandemic was. And then I think another challenge um, that we face personally is just indigenizing our production process, whether that's like creating a land acknowledgement on our credits, or if we need certain instruments, I have to call my family and have them send it to our music team or doing our casting calls from reservations. It's it's been really cool to indigenize every piece of the puzzle. Um, it's been hard, but it's my favorite thing, and I'm really proud of the work that we've all done. If I was to give advice to anybody getting into animation right now, I would say now is the time. Animation is booming. We're going through this like great renaissance where there's just so many cool TV shows out there, and you're getting a variety of voices. So I always encourage folks to join groups like Women in Animation, or if you're a writer, check out the Writers Guild Library and just be a little sponge and soak up as much knowledge as you can. The best advice that I ever got was actually from Chris. She told me that my voice was important as a writer, and that really stuck with me. I think comments like that are encouraging for people to stay true to their voices and share their stories because those are the most authentic. And then as a writer, like you'll just have the most fun if you're just sticking true to your voice. So I hope everybody does the same. Thank you so much.